Hello, I'm Greg with Zanata Consulting. Today, we're going to delve into the world of artificial intelligence and configure a Zoho ClickBot to talk with ChatGPT. Before we jump into it, please remember to like, subscribe, comment on this video, and share it with your friends or enemies. I'm not your boss. Let's get started. On today's agenda, we have three main tasks. We're going to create a click bot. We're going to add a message handler to that bot. And then we're going to modify that message handler with our bot's name, as well as a chat GPT API key. We're going to start by creating a click bot. To do that, I'm going to go to click.zoho.com. Wise words. It's always nice of Zoho to enrich you spiritually as well as businessly. To create a bot, you go to your profile picture. Click on it. And over here we have bots and tools. Click on that. And here you'll have a list of any bots you've created. I already have one here called ChatGPT, but I'm going to show you uh, how if I were to create a new one, what it would look like. I'll click on create bot. And then we have a couple of options. First, we have to give our bot a name. Let's just call this uh, Chat GPT. Uh, I do already have one, so I'm going to need to call this Chat GPT Prime to just have it have a different name. But you could just call it whatever you want. Just don't call it late for dinner. <laughs> okay. Then give a nice clear description of the bot. Uh, this bot completes prompts using Chat. GPT's AI language model. Then you can decide if this is going to be a bot just for you, you know, something personal, private, or if you want everyone in the organization to be able to have access to it. We're going to go ahead and set it to the organization level. If you are not a Click Organization admin, you can still set bots to be at the organization level, but they will have to be approved by a Click admin before anyone else can subscribe. If you plan on adding your bot to channels, uh, which we're not going to do in this case, but you could do in other instances, you can check this box to allow users to add this bot to channels. Otherwise, only you, the bot's creator, or organization admins will be able to add the bot to channels. Finally, you can upload a custom image for the bot, and you can add some fun status messages uh, that will randomly pop up, indicating whatever the bot might be doing on its off time. But, uh, Maybe let's not focus too much on personifying the AI. Click on Save Bot. Your bot's ready. Nice. So you can see there's a lot of different handlers here. The handlers refer to different pieces of code that will execute depending on how the bot is interacted with. The welcome handler is when somebody initially subscribes to the bot. The message handler, if somebody sends the bot a direct message. A mention handler, if somebody mentions the bot in a message. Context handler, while the bot is having a conversation, it trying to read over multiple messages and interpret an overall context. Incoming webhook handler for if you have an outside source that is going to send data to your bot. And the participation handler for if the bot is a part of a channel and you want the bot to listen to every message that gets said in the channel and whether or not it should respond to them. In this case, we are just going to add code to the message handler. Although I would recommend that for any bot, you at least in the welcome handler click on edit code and that's going to initialize the welcome handler code and you can just leave this as is all this does is when someone subscribes to the bot the bot will by default send that user a message saying hello and it adds them to the chat list otherwise yeah subscribe to the bot you'll have to go to your contacts scroll down to bots send something to the bot, and then you could add the bot as one of your chats or pin it to a menu. So this just makes it that much faster to get up and running. So I'll go ahead and hit save. Welcome handler has been saved. Then I can press this little back arrow and we'll go back to the handlers. Now for the message handler, I'm going to click edit code. And here's the default uh, sort of example message handler that comes with every Zoho bot when you create it. But we're going to replace all of this. So I'm going to select everything, delete it all. Now 
I'm going to head over to Club Zanata, and there will be a link to this Club Zanata post in the video description. Club.zanata.com. I sign in. Once I sign in, I'm going to go to Code Share here, where I have posted the code for this particular snippet. Now, this code that we're using is pulled from a Zoho Help article. The one difference that we at Zanata have made to it, the error handling in the Zoho version, if the bot ran into an error, it simply returns a message for you saying, sorry, I don't have any information on this. Please try something else. Uh, whereas ours uses whatever the error message is that comes back from ChatGPT. So for example, when we were first trying to set this up, we were initially getting the messages back from using the Zoho code, just saying that, I don't know anything about this, please try again later. But in reality, the issue was with our API key and our billing preferences. So that's why we changed the error message to be a little more dynamic so that you have a better idea of what's going on if something does go wrong. So here on this post, I'm just going to copy all of this information, copy that, and then I'm going to paste this into the message handler. Great. So that's all that I need to do for that. But now we need to update our token, the authorization that lets ChatGPT know that we have permission to talk to it and it has permission to talk back to us. To get an API key for your ChatGPT bot, you're going to go to platform.openai.com. You'll want to create an account. Once you do, you can go to your account settings. There's view API keys. Although when you're doing this for the first time, you will at least need to go to billing and you need to set up a paid account and add a credit card number because on OpenAPI's pricing platform, you pay for as much as you're using the bot. So you'll put a credit card on file, then as you're using the bot, you'll sort of rack up credits and every month, however many credits you used during that last month, you will be charged for on the card on file. Once you've set up your billing preferences, we're gonna come down here to API keys and you won't have anything here initially, but what you'll do is create a new secret key. And when I click on this, an important thing to note is this little window will pop up and you'll have an API key here. As they note here, this API key is only visible for this moment while this window is open. Once I hit OK and close this window, I won't be able to see this again. So you'll want to copy it while the key is up in this little pop-up, come back to your bot code, and paste that API key in place. Now I can hit OK, and I can see down here an abbreviation of the secret key so that I can see when the key was created and if the key was last used. If you ever need to switch out your API key or your API key gets leaked, such as if you were to, I don't know, display it in a publicly facing YouTube video, then you could just revoke the key from your settings, create a new one and replace it in your ClickBot. After you've put in your API key, the last step is adding your bot's name. If we scroll down to the bottom of the code, you can see that the second to last line has the actual posting of the message to our click bot. So we have zoho.click.post to bot. Here in the default code that we pasted from Zoho or Club Zanata, we have just chat GPTG, but that's not necessarily the bot name of the bot that we made. So the way that you find your bot name, I'll go ahead and hit save. And if I click on this back button and back one more time, once I back up my list of bots, I'm going to click on my bot name. And if I look at the API endpoint or the incoming webhook endpoint, I look for the text that is in between bots and message or bots and incoming. And this is the API name of my bot. So I'm going to copy that. Then let's go back to edit handlers, edit the code for our message handler and add our bot name. Now I'll hit save. Now I can go back and exit out. I'm already, because I created the bot, I'm automatically subscribed to it, but your other users will need to go to the list of bots and subscribe to it, which they'll be able to do by clicking on their profile pictures and clicking on bots and tools. So here we've got ChatGPT Prime. So I'm going to send it a message. Hello, 
chat GPT Primebot. And sure enough, I get back a message. In this case, because I'm using a demo account, my demo open API account doesn't have an actual credit card attached to it. Uh, and so I'm getting a message back saying that I have exceeded my current quota. Please check my plan and billing details. So once you've actually tied a credit card to platform.openapi.com, got a correct API key and inserted it, you'll start getting ChatGPT messages right here through Click. And that is all there is to it. If you have any questions, you can head over to club.zanata.com, join the code share forum there, and start a conversation with any one of us. Also, inside the video description, you can find links to Zanata's resource library, as well as other helpful videos like this one for other code shares, implementations, and tips. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment so you can stay tuned for more videos providing you with Zoho content. I'm Greg Belknap with Zanata Consulting, and we'll see you in the next video.